Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life Mr. Segment serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I've got Brandy and Julie here. We came <laughs> off of a really fun weekend. Mm-hmm. We needed a couple days to regroup, but we've got all the juicy scoop and so many things to discuss about our show that we did Saturday night, as well as what we experienced in Vegas. And then what also is going on in the world. So you're going to get all the juicy scoop. Welcome back, girls. Thank you. Ooh. I feel like I got run over by a truck. The weekend was so... <laughs> I mean, obviously, I drank my weight and alcohol, which is my responsibility. You don't. You look so refreshed, Heather. You don't even look like you traveled. Well, I was supposed to go last night to the Improv 60th anniversary. Ooh. And I called Chris, hoping that he'd be my date. And he was unable to. And I was at Trader Joe's with hair that needed to be washed. And it was like 4 o'clock. And... I just could not. Well, it's already starting to get dark. Okay. Mm -mm. And I was like, I I just don't have the, like, I literally don't have the energy to get cute, drive an hour, valet park, go to red carpet, talk to people, everything. I I hope it was a huge success. I did RSVP. I apologize. But I I literally went to bed at 832. I fell asleep during Sister Wives Mm -hmm. um, when... When um, Mary was trying to redo her carriage house with a gay designer and her best friend, <laughs> they just are so silly together, mm. rearranging their uh, LuLaRue, LuLaRue. Oh, the boutique. The boutique that you, yeah, yeah the MLM that you have to, mm-hmm. that you can't sell in your five bedroom house in, in Blackstaff. You have mm-hmm. to go and do it five hours away. In the Anyway, that was just what I needed to fall asleep by 8.32 was the I last mean, memory I had. You could fall asleep to that at 2 p.m. I mean, <laughs> it's beyond. If Seriously, if you guys are like, Heather, why do you talk about this as the Borga show on Earth? It is. Mm-mm. And also, if you need to fall asleep, forget about Ambien. Just watch that in a comfortable bed. Be all set up, already brush your teeth, already wash your face. Because you know, nothing's worse than not being ready for bed and then you fall asleep. Nothing watching something is worse. I yeah. hate that so much. Yeah. I, but I did sleep in my makeup all weekend. <laughs> And pretty much <laughs> still have it on. I mean, we well, had, you looked great, and we, we had went, so much fun. We were with Drakey Poo, my son, yeah, and Shannon Goldstein, my sister, and I have lots of photos to share and everything here, um, which I'll also put Wait, them on the social media. Did I not know that her last name is Goldstein? You didn't know that she married uh, a Beverly Hills Jewish attorney? No, yeah, it never came up. It uh, comes yes. up all the time. Yeah, well, then I never paid attention <laughs> yeah. because. We're like half related. Yes. I think we may have talked about it once. <laughs> but yes. Um, and mm. he is a delight. He That's is nice. the nicest husband I know. Mm. Yeah, we talked about <laughs> Shiksa's Oh, that's right. Remember I oh, said, that's I right. yes, Shik- that you did, yes. And my mom thought oh, it was funny. That. My yeah, mom was right. like, you're a shiksa now. Like, right. it's not, and we'll get into the, oh, let me write that down. We have to talk about the latest with Ramona. Um, okay, so here we go. Um I want to start with the story because I do need to clarify something about my own life that became a juicy scoop story that I kept that I have only shared on Patreon, except one episode in which I clarified one thing. Um, Other than that, I have not talked about these people on the regular show. So for those of you listening, I do need to give some backstory so that it's clear and you don't feel like, why the hell are we listening to this? So I went back in my archives to really figure out how the story began. On January 26th of 2023, I was currently in a friendship with a woman I'll name Kay that I met through a radio host named Jeff Lewis. And they were good friends. I invited um, him to an event at my country club. He brought her. We became friends after. Shortly after that, he he, uh, defamed her on the radio. He defamed Kay saying she was a bad mother and everything, to the point that she sent him a cease and desist. And then they didn't talk for a year. But I remained friends with her because that's what I do. She's a single mom. She's a friend of mine. We met her on your boat. 
Oh, okay. You met her there. Okay. <laughs> and I believe the the former um, comedian that was on my show regularly also met her through On My Boat, which I loved. We all had fun on that boat. We sure did. We had fun dinners. We had fun times. Mm-hmm. So I get invited to this Apple um, thing for shrinking. And I invited her because, you know, she's a single friend. She li- doesn't live too far away. Before that, I did Sophia Franklin's podcast. So I'm all dressed to go because I live an hour from all this stuff. And I realize I don't have earrings. And I go, I go I'm going to meet you at this meet you at this place so that we can go to the event together. Fuck, I forgot earrings. She goes, I'll bring you a pair. That is when, here we are in the bathroom, that is when I remember her handing me these earrings. Okay, these earrings are a very important part of the last two and a half, three months of my life. So that was January 26th. Now you can see I am wearing the earring with Caroline Ray, who's got to come on the show. I love her. She was probably mm-hmm. there last night. And you can see I'm wearing it on the red carpet. That was January 26th. Let's see the earring there. And you can see the earring that I still have now. Now, would you Go say this is the, the same? Would you say this is the same earring that you're seeing there? Do I'm going to put it up? <laughs> yeah, it is. I have better photos, but it is the exact same earring. Okay? okay. And I do have a witness to this earring. Her name is Kelly Dodd. And if after I put out my case, people still don't believe me, hopefully next time we're in Palm Desert together, we can take the earring, which she witnessed on my ears when I lost it, which I'll get to in a minute to another jewelry store if I have to go down to a third jewelry store because the radio host is saying I well let's get let me finish the story so now the earring never I she never mentions the earring again I forget about it months and months pass we go um to Vegas together in February we go to Cabo with our kids in March together and then in April I had it in my traveling jewelry box because I brought very little things to St. Bart's because we were going on a friend's boat with Rick and Kelly, and we had to only bring, for the way Peter traveled, I could only bring a, um, a carry-on, <laughs> Thanks, which Peter. I was proud of, which I was proud of. And so I had this little traveling like jewelry thing that was still in my bag. I didn't even bring jewelry. This was like one of the only things I had. So we go out that day. How did you get that hat with just a carry-on? I bought it. Good. I bought it there, and everything else was like you in my really bag. You can really see the earrings there. You can really see yeah. the earrings there, and there I'm wearing it to go to lunch with our hosts and with some other people along with Rick and Kelly. Okay. While I was there, mm. like I do, the music started and I started to dance and I danced and Peter filmed it, Rick of Rick and Kelly filmed it and I'm dancing, dancing, dancing and um, here I go being a good time. I mean, how can you not dance this song? I'm not going to play the whole thing. <laughs> but we we see it fall off. We see it fall off and I have video it falling off. I put it on stories um, after I get back to the boat, okay, because we're docked on this boat, and not until I put on stories and I check it like an hour later, do the girl, Kay, tell me, my earring emoji face crying, you see it falling off of me into the sand. Not till then do I touch my ears and realize I don't have one. I immediately tell the head steward lady, um, can you please call the restaurant and see if they found it? And um, at that point, they had not. I did not leave and and make a problem with my hosts and everything and ask the captain to take me in their car and drive me to this restaurant. I made the call. I was always under the understanding that they're not a big deal since I've had them for months and she's never brought them up. And I didn't want to inconvenience anyone. And so I'm like, the next day we went to lunch and I went back to the restaurant and asked again about it because the restaurant we went to was next to it. They had not found it. That was it. That was in April. Time goes on. My birthday's in June. You guys come to a dinner with this same girl. Uh, we have a lovely time. She brings me a gift. I I pay for the, the dinner. Again, no mention, no mention, no mention. Then um, on September, the Monday or you know, the Tuesday after Labor Day is when I'm listening to the Jeff Lewis radio show. And that is when he says that Heather is a liar. She's a bad friend and she is a thief. She borrowed very expensive earrings worth $10,000 from this woman. I'm going to say her name, Crystal Lamas. Bought, borrowed these earrings from Crystal Lamas, since he says her name all the time and says all of ours and drags our reputations on it. Crystal Lamas. Um, and they're worth $10,000. 
And when she asked about them, I deliberately ghosted her and that I'm a felon. I should be arrested. I should be sued. Went on. I'm listening to this absolutely shocked. And Peter's like, what earring? Like, has what, what the hell is this? I go to my jewelry section and I still have the one earring. And I go, this, this is the ear. I'm shaking. I'm shaking now talking about it. And he's like, right or right now, we need, you know, we're going to pay her. Like, you know, he, and I write, I go, I, this is the first time hearing that the earring is real, Krista. How much was it? And she's like, I think it was 2,700 or 3,000. She writes that into text. Peter right away writes a check for 3,000, mails it to her. She cashes it. I, it, I wrote a letter. I said, if I ever knew they were real, A, I would have never borrowed them. I mean, I don't know if I wrote that, but I, I would have never borrowed real stuff. The only time I've ever borrowed real jewelry was from a jeweler that I met at Leah, at, uh, Leah Black's house for <laughs> for um, Kim and, and, and Chris Humphrey's wedding. And it was so stressful. Peter made me sleep in it. I just sleep in big areas. <laughs> and like, like literally, we put like a desk in front of our hotel room. <laughs> oh I had to sign God. an insurance form. I would never, ever do. And if I had lost a $10,000 or a $3,000 earring of a friend while I was on vacation, it would have ruined my vacation. Um, so I, I figured she knew I lost it. She never brought it up. It was cool. It wasn't a big deal because I always believed they were costume under $100. Always believed it. Not till I heard it. But I paid her the money because my reputation, as yours did, continued to be dragged for weeks and weeks and weeks <laughs> while they did this commercial parody where they're like, Jeff Lewis investigates, Heather stole earrings and all this stuff. He also went on to say that maybe this has all happened because I, when I fainted back in February of 2022 on the Tempe improv stage, I must have permanent brain damage from that, which, you know, that's a great thing to say about someone's livelihood and reputation over and over and over and over and over and over four weeks. So cut to October 23rd. Getting ready for BravoCon, getting ready for my show, which I'm sharing with you guys. I have gotten over this. It still bothers me. I still get bots. I still get people that say, you're a thief. Why don't you return jewelry? Why are you so gross? You know, but I was like, because okay. They, they continue to play the promo, which is a minute long. Over and over about again. About how you're a thief. Yes. Mm -hmm. And also, these were three people in my life that I actually thought cared about me. So it was a very weird awakening for anyone that's been involved. And if you missed my episode yesterday, I had Dr. Nadine, who is the uh, wife of the real house, the real uh, Wolf of Wall Street, who's now a therapist. And it's all about narcissism, red flags, mm. and what a narcissist does. Mm -hmm. And, you know, part of that is when you're like, but wait, you did this to me. They're like, get over it. Get over it. What's wrong with you? Why are you so angry? Mm. So my reputation, everything, and a lot of fallout happened from this in the last two months. Um, Relationship-wise, sponsor-wise, things like that, things I had to deal with, and just lack of sleep, anxiety, like I have anxiety talking about it now. So I go to this jewelry store that's been there forever. It, um, The jewelry store is called Jean-Pierre Jewelers. It's on Ventura Boulevard, and I go in there. Because I thought, you know, with BravoCon and everything and Raquel from Vanderpump, you know, getting on along with her life, I thought it was really cool that she auctioned off the lightning bolt necklace and um, it got up to like nine or $10,000, mm. which she said she was going to give to charity. So I'm like, you know, this earring must be worth at least $1,500 in diamonds and gold. Maybe we make two small ones out of it. I auction it off and make lemonade out of lemons. And again... Like I'm being told by the radio host and everybody, move on. Okay. I was going to move on and laugh about it, get to a place where I can laugh about it. So I go in there and I ask the guy and he goes, I go, so I tell him the story why I want to make something out of it. And he goes, it's custom. I go, what? He, I go, it's custom. It's costume. It's costume. It's worth nothing. I mean, like if this was a movie, it would have been all the times I like cried in my bed, heard him talk about me, say bad things about me, all the, the, the mean comments, all the social media that other people did talking mm. about me on YouTube. I'm a bad friend. I don't care about people's property. I'm this, I'm that, all these things. I ghosted her, which I have the text message. I never ghosted her. Um, just 
like where where was where was the last couple of years of my life, you know? And so mm-hmm. I'm shaking and I'm like, I don't know what to do with this because so then I say to the guy, how do I prove it? And he goes, well, I'll do a, a special appraisal for you, which he did. And I have here. Okay. I have here. I have it here. You see the earring. And he goes through it and he says, whoops, there's 159 cubic zirconian crystals, whatever, not crystals, cubic zirconian in this. He took the time to do it. He went on the loop, whatever. I still couldn't believe it. I go over to De Beers in Topanga, in which that man said right away, it's fake. You can tell from the discoloration. You can tell like, but also he went on the loop. He's like, it's not real diamonds. Okay. Did he even say there are cubics? cubics? Yeah, he said there were cubic okay. zirconian too. So that's why um, it looks so good. I went back again yesterday um, to, you know, just in, just ensure to the guy again. And he goes, you went to another place. You don't believe me. I go, you know, I, I just can't believe that people don't believe me. I have the earring. This is it. She then uh, the Jeff Lewis says, well, I believe her. You believe her. She sent you a cease and desist a year ago. <laughs> like you believe her over me. And, and he thinks, oh, I went and got another pair of earrings and did this whole elaborate thing. And, oh, this wasn't planned or whatever. Well, there's so many more facts with that I will not bore you with about how these three people that I thought were very close to me really did work together. And then for it to continue on for content um, that I thought my audience, especially the audience that paid to see me in Vegas during BravoCon, they would like to know the juicy receipts. Housewives bring receipts. I felt like I lived through the Real Housewives of podcasting with you <laughs> guys. And I was like, I'm going to show the real receipts. And in it, I did get a little heated because it's it, it devastating, like devastating, awful, awful lies. Now, a couple days later, I just feel I don't know why he, Jeff Lewis, goes after women. I don't know why he wants to ruin women in our business reputation on the air um, over and over and over again. And I should have known. But just like Dr. Nadine said, when you are conned by a friend, a boyfriend, whatever, you shouldn't be hard on yourself because you believed that the relationship was real because you felt real about that because you're good. You think everyone else is good. Now, yes, looking at this man's um, track record, I shouldn't be surprised. But at the same time, I'm not going to beat myself up forever thinking that this could happen to me. But it did. We had one of our <laughs> listeners go and, and um, rip every single episode that we were um, dragged. And it was more than seven where it was long, long, long conversations, um, demeaning, insulting, slandering, a- a- any insulting thing that could be said was said. And we had, I mean, I couldn't listen. So I don't know how you. Um, I, I didn't listen to all of them. I've listened to some of them. Um, I'm, I appreciate any listener that wants to do that for us. Um, I can't believe that Sirius allows this to go on. And well, on and on. Well, I can't believe that Sirius allows it to go on either when apparently we were let go because of far less from Sirius, apparently, who won't allow us even in the building. So for which what they we, will, which is not us, true. That, right. That's what was said about us. One of the things that's not true, though. So I mean, there's well, many. That's what I'm saying. There's that many Sirius quality is, shows on Sirius and many quality hosts. But I do believe that Sirius should in turn. I don't want a tulip or a an orchid from Jeff Lewis, the way he sends it to other women that he disparages and says awful things about. I do want Sirius to play a commercial. like As many times as he played that commercial parody, I would like them to play a commercial promoting Juicy Scoop <laughs> in return. As many times as that fair. was played, that is what I think is a fair um, exchange. And I just don't think, I don't think his show is a safe place for women. Anybody that's a woman in his circle will eventually get it. And that is what I, that is my opinion. You can have a different opinion. (laughs) Um, You know, MJ is on there saying um, that, oh, you know, they're worried that my Juicy Scoopers are turning around because they don't want to hear about this. 
And I'm like, I barely talked about it on this regular show. And and this is the same woman that they recorded when she was wasted at a Christmas party. And they played on the show saying, Heather McDonald's a whore. And I hope that she dies on the car way, gets in a car crash and dies on the ride home in which my son was driving my husband and I. And um, not for nothing. That's the same woman that is now saying I should get over it and move on before my listeners turn on me. And that's also the same show that recorded a woman who was overserved and then played her mm-hmm. saying something when she was clearly blackout drunk. Yes. And they went ahead and played that with no problem at all. No. Don't throw anyone under the bus. Right. And yeah. people crawl back out from under the bus because I guess they feel that this uh, position of being on a show occasionally is worth it for their career. And if that is, the, I'm not going to judge someone's career, but, you know, get ready for when he then does it for you to you for weeks and and keeps you from getting jobs or possibly keeps you from getting sponsors because he says you're unprofessional. And said, I don't know why he doesn't go after any man besides the one that he dates. Yeah, they, I mean, where why there's so many men. Why are there no strong? Oh, that's maybe because he doesn't associate with any strong men because they wouldn't put up with it, and we're not putting up with it anymore. And I and I hope people see this for what it is. It definitely feels like there's a double stand. I mean, there it. You know, if you looked at the history of or at least what we have went through and what we know and what we've seen and even through all of the shows or whatever that you can watch him on, it definitely seems that the women get the brunt of the of the um, the dragging more than anyone else. Because we're easier targets. Yeah. So, I mean, we have to that, work that, harder to get where we are in this life. Yeah. And women <laughs> also re- often women that will will pick the guy's side. Yeah, because, I mean, and, and it's respect easy. him over the the people that are that are you know the women women. This is why we're not further along. <laughs> you know, it is. I do think it's that like, the thing the the crazy thing with him is that he's so he's funny, he's charming, yes. he's all of those things. Yes, he's talented. He's blah 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 yes. blah. You watch him on that show. That stuff is entertaining. When it isn't you, it's fun to watch. Yes, and so when and it's it isn't juicy you, and it's fun to it's watch. Juicy and it's dramatic and it's crazy and it's insane. And we even going into it new like are we doing this like is this crazy but you don't believe the depth it will go you don't you don't believe it and you, you don't, don't think it'll it. ever happen to you you don't think it'll happen to you and even in a small scale like with that with their small things that happen to people currently on the show they get dragged that's fun it's teasing it's this they give it back they do this they do that but when you are dragged through the For gates weeks of and hell weeks. And your reputation, your money, your job, your livelihood, but your other friendships, your other yes, friendships he's put out of the thing, warning people not to be friends with us. And yeah, I just I mean, I'm extremely uncomfortable right now. And I just <laughs> I, well, do, I, mean, I we do, can move on. I don't want to make anyone. I'm, no, I but just, I'm like, I want to put it out there that it was <sighs> I feel like, you know, just speaking for Julie and I, we 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 maintained a sense of humor about it for um m- you know, months before we were, you know, illegally fired. And then we ma- we maintained silence and we still were able to laugh about it. And it just, um, um, it's just stop being funny um, when, when people aren't allowed to be friends with us. And uh, if they're still friends with him, it's, it's just, it's, it's, um, I, t- I can't have a sense of humor about it anymore. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it is really hard and, you know, people, oh, get over it, whatever. I don't think unless you experience it and that, and that it goes on and that every time you open your phone. But he doesn't get over it. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. But like, and I I get but it. But I'm not going like to get a, over the lie that this is worth $100. And it was, he first said it was proof. 10. And if she told him it was 10, the fact that he refused to call me back, all this he had decided he was going to use this story. I don't know how much, how much preparation went before it but it was enough of a weekend because on friday i was like call me call me call me he would not call me he didn't return my calls even the week prior to that and then on tuesday after labor day is when he said these earrings are worth ten thousand dollars i'm a felon i should go to prison i should be sued and then i did think it was suspicious that then she only said three at that point, I didn't care. I wanted the conversation to stop. And I thought by paying her the 3000 they would stop talking about it. They didn't. They still continued to play that commercial. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and people said, go get appraised, Heather. And I was like, 
I want to try to move on. I don't want to get it appraised. I want to move on. I want to just say this was a chapter of my life. I was, you know, I had a, I, I thought these people were my friends. They never were. I'm disposable like many other women in his life because he is charming. And when he looks at you, he makes you feel like you're the funniest person. You're his favorite, da, da, da. So you believe all of it. Mm -hmm. And then, so I was trying to move on. Well, how can you move on when somebody keeps, that's the other thing too. It's not, it's, it's very inauthentic or it's hypocritical to say, move on, move on, move on. When you've tried to move on and then they talk about it again and now you're dragged back in. It's Godfather 3. I've said this too many times that I've tried to get out and they drag me back in. Like that's what we, happens. Yeah, we, none of us want to be discussed on his show you ever can't help but any react. more. I don't want anything to do with the people that are part of it. I don't have any, like nothing, leave, leave us alone. But I am going to let people know that this was fake. And that's my proof. And I think it's pretty clear who the two-headed snake is and her involvement in in a few things that happened in my life. And I think they're very much a similar pair, maybe why they do awful things like send cease and desist to each other and don't talk to her for a year and then come together to go after me. So that's my thing. And we can... Talk about anything else, or if you have any <laughs> last thoughts, then we can move on with the funny stuff. Well, that no, well, you have every. But I, mean, I do think you're listen. You got the you got the proof. Th and this is and not a proof. boring story, by the way, JC Scooper. So it's, I I can't imagine one. Story. I can't imagine one person being like, I don't want to hear about how someone was completely dragged publicly for two weeks from two months from three very close people that she went on vacations with and worked with. That, that you wouldn't want to hear this story. So here it is. Uh, I, I, I want to say two things. One, we don't begrudge anyone who continues to do the show and any friendships that we had, we continue to have. We understand all of it and don't begrudge anyone anything except for the people who fucked us over and you know who you are. Um, as far as this, the earring goes, you have actual proof. And I think it is fucking, it should make everyone insane that he then is refuting the actual physical proof. You have a receipt. You have a appraisal, an appraisal that you could take to any jewelry store and they're going to look at that seal and that guy's handwriting and they're going to go, yes, we believe that. But then he goes and says, I think that Heather went and got another set of earrings and that's fake. Again, say I'm a liar. What? What? To say I'm a liar like, again. To say I'm a liar it, again. Are we have glue? This is... To say I'm a liar again. So that so, is why, like, when defamatory, you say move on, defamatory, serious radio, radio Andy, defamatory lies. And he wants you to move on and her for mm -hmm. you to move on because they know that this is the truth. And so let's, that's, are we good? Do you think you're going to get your $3,000 back? I, I don't care about the 3000 Play Juicy Scoop. R say, say that I'm not a liar. Do whatever it is. If you want to give me back your th my three thousand, yes, and I will give it to charity. I'll give it to Vanderpump Dogs. They've been very good. Um, you know, I I think it's a solid charity, and I love that charity. And you know, they take uh, what I really love about Vanderpump Dogs is they do the surgeries. You know, when people can't afford um, their dog to be saved and things like that. So I love that, and that's what I will do. If she decides to give the money back to me, fine. But I don't. I'm not calling her. I don't want anything to do with this person and I'm glad to get rid of her for $3,000 but absolutely beyond shocked when I was at that jewelry store it doesn't even need to be a shameful thing to go even if at the even if it isn't true even if it isn't true let's say on their side she could go oh my god I'm such an idiot I got I you know what I was totally wrong about the earrings I'm so sorry and give you the money back or he could be like um you know what I was told that it wasn't I guess it's not true she's got the receipts uh, sorry but also, why like, wouldn't why he call so me? Why wouldn't he call me and be like, Heather? Chris is saying those earrings are worth ten thousand dollars, and you've blown her off. Are they really worth ten thousand dollars? If he would have called me back that week, I would have gone to a jeweler and been like, My God, how do I? Can you make another one of this? Mm. I feel terrible. Did she never mention it because she's such a rich, generous friend that it didn't matter, and it only matters her to now because. She's she's she, I was the last to call her, too. So she wasn't returning my calls either. So that she had this one little thing. I borrowed earrings. I lost one and I never made good on it. Well, I didn't make good on it because it's a hundred dollars. And we we went out and did things together after that in which I paid for drinks and food. So that is why. And <sighs> did I handle everything 
perfectly in the last three months? Probably not. Do I have some regrets? Yes. But the final chapter of the worst three months of my career is over and <laughs> this is it. And I don't want to talk about it anymore, you know, I, but I do want people to know the truth and I am vind vindicated and I want people to look at the picture big and broad now and see how obvious it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, it is <laughs> and, obvious. And, and the way he w runs his life and his show and the people that participate on it, you know, it definitely made me understand Jenny Poulos a lot more. Mm. And I always did. And when that Jenny Poulos thing happened, which was his former, um, they did a show together right when it happened. I, and he went forward with it on the air. I was in Scottsdale. I remember being on the phone with her because I was doing a show. And I said, I am seeing all the horrific things being said under your photo with your kids, Jenny. Would you like to come on Juicy Scoop? I think you should share your side. And she was like, no, I'm just, I, I want to just walk away. So I was not at that time throwing Jenny away either. And we were friends even after that. I haven't talked to her in a while just because, you know, there hasn't been a reason to. The kids are older. And, and then I started to do his show regularly. And so, but it wasn't like anyone was not calling each other back. She was fine. She's the person who did my, um, does my opening. I love it. She knows it. I, I'm going to keep it. Um, and then to see that she was doing BravoCon, we were so happy and then he makes a comment. What was the comment? I mean, it was written out. It was mean, but it's out. It's public. That it was Bravo's version of Make-A-Wish Foundation inviting her to BravoCon. Yeah. So that's... Well, what was it then inviting him to BravoCon? He's not on Bravo. Right. So... Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, am I crazy? That, I mean, I don't know if that's what doctor, the doctor lady Nadine. said. Nadine yeah. said that the thing with narcissists is also like... If there's so much um, deflection and yeah. deflection of what they're saying about their own selves. And at the end of the day, anyone who want, you know, with 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 his whole thing, it's just like like we said, the shit is entertaining. It's dramatic. People get stuck into a toxic cycle and we all got sucked into it. And now we're we're out. We're going to get and out. We're all victims okay. of it. I feel like I'm going to have a panic attack. OK, go, OK, relax. Let's talk about something funny. OK. <laughs> So the show was great. I took a great photo with this girl. She had a Juicy Scoop shirt since 2015. But then you guys did not go to this Electra Club after. It was in the Venetian. These are two cute guys. And um, and Drake came. And it was all like mu music from like the 2000s. <laughs> mm. and we were talking about how. So Drake is there. And I go, oh, my God, this song is so old. It was, it's getting hot in here. So take off all your clothes. And I go, I remember changing Drake in the morning in his little onesie and being like, take off all your clothes. <laughs> and I'm like, and now I'm dancing to the song while Drake is drinking a beer, helping me with my show so and weird. filming me. It was so weird. And then this juicy scooper just was just <laughs> all over him <laughs> and I mean, having fun. And it was, he was a great sport. <laughs> the next day we went to BravoCon. Let's talk BravoCon. I thought it was really fun. It's great to see the fans. You guys got to come. We only went on Sunday afternoon. Right. And we met lots of fans and people dress up. These two girls, one dropped, dressed up as Tom Schwartz. The other one actually had a worm costume covering her head with a mustache. Oh, oh, so she was a is. worm and a mustache. Okay. And so that is really fun. You know, it is that like Comic-Con kind of a thing. It is like Comic-Con. Where people are really dressed up and excited or they're just dressing cute so they can look good when they meet their housewives. And that was fun. I they're mean, I want to thank you. We had um, a crazy fun weekend. Totally exp all expenses paid. We didn't. I mean, the only money we spent was on gambling. We never. Oh, did you win anything? Oh, everything we won, we lost. <laughs> oh, we really? Drake won $30. <laughs> yeah, we, oh, okay. we would win. We'd get up and then we would just keep going. Just keep going. Just I love fun. it, though. But That's I just fun. you. You got us into all of the BravoCon events, which BravoCon is for the privileged, honey. It is not cheap. <laughs> and then there's even extra add-on events that are even more money. Yes, and like the tapings of the Watch What Happens Lives, I guess, is an extra event. Also, there was an Omni nightclub thing that people did come up to me and said that was the biggest waste of money. That was $500. And the stars that were there... Yeah, they're there too, but they don't have to engage or take photos the way they do at BravoCon. Mm. So they were like at their 
like you know, VIP boost. Area. And what I what I kind of feel is like a I feel kind of bad for some of um those Bravo celebrities because then they they some of the people go and they're like they were talking to each other and they weren't engaging with us. Well, it's my understanding they weren't maybe even paid to engage on that. And it is exhausting. So then if you don't take a photo with everybody, then people go on the social media and say, you know, what she didn't jerk. take a photo with me. She snubbed. She, she'd rather talk to Margaret Joseph than me. Right. And, you know, nothing without your fans. And we saw a video that was shared on our live show that a fan sent me of uh, these very drunk women screaming at Shep oh, yeah. in the middle of a casino. <laughs> yeah. You'd be nothing without your friends. And the girl's like covering her friend's mouth. And he's like, and I, I'm like, come on, you know, uh, it is weird because you got to take all your photos at, at BravoCon, but we're all, but it also makes it fun because they're walking around in the uh, wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They do, they, most of them love it, love it, taking photos. But this is such a, like a sensory overload for people. Like their faces are like frozen after everyone's exhausted. Yeah. It I mean, is a you, lot. You just eventually hit a wall. And I mean, this is us with our minor, you know, we were there only on Sunday. And by then it was like, you know, people Wait, had okay. met Here everyone. We are. So we took this really cute picture when we were leaving it, of all of us. And, and, oh, I think I took a, that Shannon's eyes are shut. Whatever. We look <laughs> cute. Um, and yeah. And that part, like was fun. And then we were in the VIP Hilton thing. And that was nice because we did have seats. So we always mm -hmm. had a place to go back to. And um, anybody that was a Juicy Scooper or, you know, Brandy and Julie fans and stuff like that, they could come up to us and it was chill. Yeah. That, so that I think, like, I would suggest to anyone, and I said it last year, A, wear comfortable shoes. Oh. B, <laughs> you can go three days, you know, but you could also just go one and kill it, get all your photos. If it, a super fan wants to go all three, but you could just go one and feel like you did it. And then maybe just go and then pay extra for the Watch VIP. What Happens Live thing. And then also VIP. And then have your naps and have your lunch and just have a little downtime. But do the VIP one day for sure. I'm not, I do not know how these... I know you, you can run on super fandom but for so long, but I mean, these people were giving it to like everyone, all of their love, all of their energy for three long days. I mean, it was really, you know, even the drunk girls yelling at Shep, it's still, it was, it was it's a still lot love. of, it was still a, love. Yeah, it's love. It's, it's love. still it's love. It's like, yeah. I love you. Yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah. that was a really like good, it was like the, you know, the old days of Bravo. Bravo has become, you know, um, like Jeff, a bit toxic. And yeah. I, it, going to BravoCon brought back the feeling of like the way of everybody loving each other. Yeah. You know? We went to the juiciest panel there, right. which was on Sunday, which was. Tell us about that. Um, it was the New Jersey state of mind, I guess. I don't remember what it was called. By then, everybody in the VIP had done a ton of panels. And so no, yeah. nobody was. Um, nobody was interested in going with us over into there. <laughs> I do. I do have to say, and I said this quickly on the top of yesterday, uh, Tuesday show. Um, everything I saw, and I sat through part of a panel, which was the Ultimate Girls Trip panel with um, Michael Rappaport. And, you know, someone asked a question, Dorinda, who do you think should be put on pause next? And Michael was like, I don't like that question. That's a mean question. We're not going to answer that question. And Dorinda was like, I can't like answer that question. <laughs> Sometimes putting on pause is not the worst thing on the world. You know, and he's like, well, you're going to lose your job. And like, I kind of think because of the opening episode of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills was literally about something Erica said. Who is the next relationship that's going to break up? And she said Dorit and PK at BravoCon. And I believe they, you know, made that a storyline. Maybe it was also too, but it was kind of perfect and kind of not that it aired right before the actual BravoCon. And I do believe it made everybody be on better behavior. Mm. And I also believe it's a, being now part of the Real Housewives of Podcasting. It is exhausting with the way the world is now versus 10 years ago that when you say something, then all the fans are like, she said this about you and you shouldn't be her friend and she's not your friend. And then, then you're filming the show. Then podcasts are talking about you. Then every housewife has a podcast. And it's like, oh my God. And then still, the you know, Aunt Andy wants you to be snarky. Yeah. Say it. Say it. And you're like, if I say this, I'll make you happy and I will suffer for the next nine months. Yep. So 
And then everything there was a lot of that. Taken, it's taken out of context. Yeah. Even Erica and Dorit discussing it. Yeah. Erica's, you know, trying in her, you know, like newly anorexic way to explain <laughs> that, you know, she was giving it the people what the people wanted, you that know, and giving the blogs what the blogs wanted. And, and she was, you know, just, you know, sort of implying that or saying that she didn't mean it. She was just being, being a showman. Be, yeah, being a showman. She said, being I'm a showman. I'm a showman. Yeah. Do it. yeah. I'm a showman. I was Tom a showman. And I know that they're having a problem. <laughs> Absolutely not. But I did. And um, right. so I, so I, when I saw that one, then they all like started talking about like what they did before and Kelly Bessimone, whose legs are ridiculous. They all look gorgeous. <laughs> I said, those are the, um, so they were missing Ramona. And I didn't see that there was any conversation about Ramona. I think Dorinda was just like, it was disappointing. She said that on like a carpet. <laughs> Everyone's just like, keep your stink away from me. But they are going to air that one. Apparently, they may never air the Brandy Caroline Manzo sexual assault in a bathroom one. That is so disappointing. I know. I'm so disappointed. But who knows? And um, But Andy confirmed, no, they're definitely airing that one. And... You know, Chris and Tateman look gorgeous. They all look gorgeous. And Kelly's like, well, now I do real estate. And then you're just like, actually, you know what? I did real estate. First, I was married to <laughs> Hannah's dad. And then I was actually a realtor when I met Richard. And, da -da -da. and I'm like, okay, now we're getting the life story that you like told on my podcast six years ago. And I don't need to hear it. And like, let me go. So then we get up and leave. But I do feel the panels were pretty dull. There were only a few cool thing, funny things that happened that I heard about. We literally begged 10 people even f fans to go over it was to leave to leave the to VIP. leave the VIP and everyone's like oh it's way over there it was like <laughs> next door okay <laughs> and everyone's like don't do it the panels are boring and I'm like no we haven't been to one panel like ever it was our first BravoCon I want one plus we, yeah we know Teresa we didn't know who was going to be on the panel but we like literally know no Teresa but we've never met Louis so we're like let's go um it was half empty the half that was there were on their phones the half that were on their phones left halfway through i mean well because they had split the cast so they had two new jersey casts oh yeah because melissa and Teresa, okay, you know right. they can't be together so there was i guess one cast which would have been margaret melissa um so, jen um goldschneider what's her jackie, name jackie goldschneider jackie. and the fessler girl and then this mm. one was jennifer aiden with their husbands louis jen who else was on no it? jackie Where's was the? on Jackie, oh, you're right. Jackie wouldn't be with Margaret. Right. Jackie would be on this side because Jackie and Margaret no longer like each other. Okay. But so, where's the girl? What we? What, I can't remember Danielle. her name. Where's so she? So Danielle must have been on the other cast because well, Danielle oh, and Jennifer got in a physical no. altercation. So they couldn't be on stage together. Oh. So that's why there were two casts. But also oh. now we have a cast that all likes each other. <laughs> So how juicy. So the juiciest part was this girl gets up to ask a question and she says, Jennifer Aiden, um, there was two juicy parts. Oh, tell. You were there. The, the, well, the first juicy part was, it was always going to be the audience questions, which I didn't realize is when, you know, the shade shit stirring starts. Yeah. Because everybody needs their, you know, 10 seconds of fame. So this, um, I think it was a guy. Was yep. it a guy or mm -hmm. girl? The first one was a guy. And he said, I'm not sure. I thought it might, might have been a girl. But he oh. said, to Louie. Um, tell the audience what you do for a living in 10 words or less. Yes, I saw that. And the whole crowd, I mean, everybody dropped their phones at that point. The only people that were paying attention before that were Julie and I. We were just like, this is incredible. <laughs> Can you guys believe this? They're like, yeah, we've fucking been here for three days. Yeah. We don't give a shit. Because we went the last day Sunday. Yeah. yeah. We're like, Teresa's sitting right there. Like, you guys, look at this shit. Isn't this wow. And everyone, <laughs> Who's right there? And then Julie and I keep, we sneak in because we were late. And then we but just- wait, he, he does answer though. Well, I'm just okay, telling sorry, you that we ahead. keep- scooting up or like, closer yeah. yeah just until we're getting closer and closer just sorry excuse me people would see people leave we take their seats keep going yeah so then by the time the guy asked it what you do in 10 words or less the girl did she yeah did. i think yeah. it's a girl yeah. and then everybody drops their phones and i mean it was more than 10 words and i think it was and then she was too I bad you went past 10 words he uh, basically yeah. said uh, marketing internet marketing something like that and then she's like more than 10 words but he he laughed at it he had a good attitude about it and it was the crowd screamed yeah like screamed and louie i saw louie because i the day before i lost the day after i lost this earring we hung out with louie and Teresa in saint bart's and um and I said, yeah, come on the show. So he he stopped me. We went outside uh, on Saturday um, before my show. I had Drake come with me and I had him wear a Juicy Scoop security shirt because I obviously didn't want to be recognized. 
<laughs> and as we walk all the way in my heels, because I want to get cute, from the Venetian to the place, I realize I don't have my phone. I left it at a pizza place. But of course, it took 10 minutes to re- have me realize that it's safe at a pizza place. But I mean, when you lose your phone, it's I assume it's what it would be like for a young mother to misplace her toddler at this time. Because <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm like... Oh well, my god! Well, you my can't even done. go anywhere. It, you don't have directions. You don't have. It, at that point, you just have to like lay down well, and luckily, like take me to the emergency room because I'm. <laughs> I mean, I guess sure. I'll die. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm gonna die here in ten seconds. Cause so luckily, Drake had his phone, so we like call the pizza place they have. I'm like, okay, fine. I go. Well, we're not going in and getting my wristband because I had a three day wristband. I have to do the show, but just then, as we're walking without us planning, we see where the um, talent entrance is, and these people were the smartest. They didn't pay a dollar. They got to see photos and they got selfies with mm. so many people there. So like those people really scored. So I go, okay, Drake, Drake. And I'll post this too on my social media. I'm like, all right, just film me. Just film me. So I go and everyone's like, Heather, Heather. And I start taking photos with everybody. I literally do like a little loop and I go, great day at BravoCon. And I'm like, <laughs> I got to go get my phone. Like we left. So as we're leaving in the golf cart, because the stars have the golf carts and stuff, so they can wear death defying shoes. And stuff. Everybody else cannot. And Louis like, Heather. And he was he said to Drake, I met your dad, blah, blah. And he goes, I want to come on your show. And I go, I'd love to have you come on the show. I'd love to talk about all this shit together alone, whatever. Can you come in person? And he said he's going to. So I would really love mm. to get the scoop because yeah. the latest thing is his former fiance, who also became a therapist. She's the one who ran in the wedding dress to prove like I've run away from this awful man. She f- sued, she tried to get a restraining order against Louis by saying that a client came in to speak to her and then asked all about, do you miss Louis? Do you still love Louis? And she believed that Bo Deedle hired this girl to get scoop from the therapist and give it back to Louis. Oh. It seemed very contrived. It seemed very weird. Mm-hmm. They presented their case and Louis prevailed. Nice. The judge was like, no. So that's a weird story. Yeah. That's a weird story. I mean, we're There's team, a lot we're of team weird Teresa stuff Louis. happening. We in, are. There's we a are. lot of weird things happening in New Jersey. I mean, I also love Margaret. Margaret had a great moment on this. We went, the show that we went to was um, the BravoCon line, the last show. This is the shade room where they do this thing where they go, um, all right, who do you think wears the most fake designer shit and then they go and then it lands on someone's face and then they have to answer oh i think whatever melissa whoever and every time they did that someone was like i think everyone has great style (laughs) (laughs) and i just imagine annie getting another thing ask ask another question we literally have nothing to put on air ask another question ask another question and one of the questions so they asked margaret something who is a snarkish i mean she goes well it's not someone on this panel. It's someone from Dubai. And she goes, she says I'm old and this and that or something like that. Maybe. And she goes, I think saying someone is old is the lamest thing. I'm First of all, I'm as old as Andy. So why is no one, criti- like she didn't say that, but it's true. Why is no women saying, you know what? Andy's too old to be doing what he's doing. No, we'll only talk about other women's ages, which is like, it's the one thing there's nothing you can do about. It is always the grossest thing when we like we're watching Salt Lake last night. And yeah, she, that one girl, I can remember her name is always like, OK, like you're old or whatever. Which one? To Monica Lisa, or Monica's no, kept Monica. saying it to Lisa Barlow. And it's just like he's like gorgeous and fabulous. Yeah. And like, amazing. And you're going to say you're old. That's what you have. You're old. Like, bitch, you're going to get old, too. I know. And also, I, I she's not even you, old. I hope <laughs> you do make it to my age. A lot like, of people don't. We're like, all, what the- that's we're all going to we'll be old. Like, why would you disrespect the other thing? That? I can't stand is when people go, it. who's the thirstiest housewife? You guys, your housewives. You're all dehydrated. <laughs> I mean, every single one of you. You're parched. You're in a desert. I'm thirsty too. We're, We're all in thirsty. anyone in this business is thirsty for attention. Anyone You're in at, a business by the way, anyone that is about the, getting the attention. Event. Anyone who even bought a ticket to BravoCon is, is, a, thirst, is a thirst bucket. <laughs> if you ask the question, who's whoever's asking the question is the thirstiest person at that moment. <laughs> yeah. Who's the thirstiest? You are. Who are you asking the question? You're the one. <laughs> We're all thirsty. Yep, We're all thirsty. thirsty. And you know, um, I was saying this somewhere, I don't mean, know on the show but when i think about how little water my generation drank <laughs> and how much water these kids drink now 
Yeah, we're still dehydrated. Yes. Yeah. The 50 year old housewives are fucking thirsty. We went and got an IV yesterday drink water. and I got two bags <laughs> and still woke up puffy. I was like, um, my how many bags are did so I need? dry yeah. even after that. <laughs> well, IV. My lips were really dry too. Also being so the desert dry. and everything. Yeah. Um, but so anyway, the other thing that Jennifer Aiden got in trouble for was another question that a woman asked. And she said, why are you so far? How far up will you go up Teresa's asshole? Now, Teresa didn't hear it. Louie laughed. And and I thought Jennifer had a good answer until she got up and she was like, that's being a good friend. We have each other's back. Maybe you don't have any good friends, whatever. But then she goes, hey, big boy. And then people caught that as misgendering her and fat shaming her. The girl who asked the question. Oh, I didn't remember who asked the question. It was a woman. Uh, we couldn't oh, see. We I, didn't, were, I didn't know who asked. It question. was a woman, and she was kind of funny the way she said it. And then she was like, "I don't even want an answer." Like she walked away, and then and then someone tweeted that, and then Jennifer Aiden doubled down on the tweet, right? And responded. Was she, was she like Julie type of like no, a big boy? Yeah, like like <laughs> no, Julie she was like, just like a big boy, boy like Julie. Or... No, she was just a woman <laughs> in a baseball hat and like a big T-shirt. Mm -hmm. oh, you wouldn't well. even know what her so but so saying that hey big boy whatever and then she was well, like and then, off with that shit you wanted to ask a snarky yeah. question that's and what you, she was saying and you got a snarky so answer she, back so get the fuck out of our that face that is exactly what jennifer said <laughs> yeah and like yeah and I, I i kind of on jennifer's side in this yeah part. 100%. like if you you're gonna play, ask a mean question you you listen this girl is could not be happier that A, we're talking about her, that her video went <laughs> viral and that she was called Big Boy. Like, she's thirsty too. <laughs> of course. And <laughs> yeah, I agree. And it's the same thing. Someone, I saw someone film something like, I went up to Jax and told him he blocked me. And they, she's getting a photo with Jax. And he goes, well, you probably said something mean. Mm -hmm. And then, and sweet Brittany's like, I'm sorry, he gets sensitive sometimes. <laughs> and it's like, again, so and the comments were like, yeah, what do you want him to do? Yeah, what am I supposed to say? Be what? To say, let's go out to lunch since you hate me? Like, wh right. why do you think you got blocked? Yeah. You dumb He bitch. still took a nice photo with you. <laughs> exactly. He still talked to you. Yeah. People are so, that's where you get, it gets weird. I mean, we've had things like that too, where I've had a full person write an article about me, defaming me, the whole thing when I was doing stand up at whatever, and then ran into her at an event. And she's like, can I take a picture with you? And I said, no, you're dead to me. Don't ever talk to me again ever literally if i ever see you you'll be like a corpse you're under the ground no i'm um, like, just like well, we were, i had, we I had, had a housewife moment like that with someone too that are I you felt, gonna say who no but i i have since written her and apologized for being so emotional when we met but i do not appreciate the stuff that she had shared about these last two months of my life i did not enjoy mm. her commentary i did not enjoy her opinion of me and so i called her on it but I have since been like, I'm not happy that I had my housewife moment with you, you know, but it, Listen, it we happens. All get pushed. Because we all get pushed. I understand why the housewives act the way yeah, they do we now. Yeah. We I do. Forever. Like, well, it's like, can I just say we um, accidentally, first of all, we went to the mall. We're dropped off at the mall. Um, instead of the Caesar. Oh, this is right. how... Oh, not, this is why you guys are so late. Yes. Like, where are you? Where yes. are you? I oh, have your oh First, God. we get in the cab and we go, the Caesar Forum. And the guy, like, I thought he was going to open hand slap us both across the face. <laughs> like, I was like... And I go to Julie. I'm like, this is... Oh, fuck. This is across the street. And he's <laughs> he is ready to kill us. And we're like, oh, we were apologizing profusely. We were like, we're going to give you a big tip. He, We end up at the mall. I'm like, clearly, this isn't where the thing is. But Candy Burris is coming out of Valentino with like her like her, shopping. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love it. And so then I'm like, I don't care. We're getting the fuck out of the cab. And Julie's <laughs> like, no, we're going to have to call another cab. I'm like, we're getting out. Candy's right there. So we get out. She passes by us and I just stand and stare at her in her. She get into like an Escalade with like super black tinted windows. But I was just like. <laughs> you waving. Say hi. <laughs> yeah, I was just waving like this as she drove off. I didn't care. Then we had to call another cab. Take us to the Caesar place. The real place. We got dropped off at the fan exit too. The which talent is, entrance. Uh, which talent entrance, which is basically like a huge red carpet with all the Beverly Hills people coming out. At the and same Julie time. And Julie and I hiding behind Dorit's Escalade. <laughs> And Julie, Julie's standing there. She's like, do you guys know how do we get in here? We're looking uh, for Heather McDonald. I'm like, Julie, 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 get out of the way, get out of the way, get out of the way. And she's like, no, but where, how do we, can I ask? And like Dorit like sails by us, gets in her car, which I'm hiding behind. Mm -hmm. Then Heather. I'm we, like, oh, Dorit. Yeah. Then we have to go walk in, Heather. Yes. And do you think any, 
we have to go walk by everyone. <laughs> After Dorit got a huge Kyle, applause. And then, like and then, the um, biggest stars. The other one, I always forget her name, but she walked in, blah, you know, she's Tr now Sutton. an OC. Oh, uh, Taylor. Taylor walks in, huge, the ro yeah. crazy, <laughs> ro woo! And then we're like walking by, and I think we literally heard one, Julian Brandy! Yeah. And we were like, Mm -hmm. We're actually having to walk all the way around. Like we had to ask <laughs> a, a, the fans like how to get in. Like we were like, where do we even go? We don't even understand what this is. Um, yeah, no, I would have preferred to be dropped off at the correct. Well, yes, like, we had to walk all the yeah. way around that, but that was pretty funny. No one. It was like a smatter, like Julian Brandy, and everyone's like, who? Who cares? <laughs> Like they would rather stare at the door and hope someone good comes out of it than even turn and watch us <laughs> well, walk across. I saw a lot of people excited to take photos with you when we got in there. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah, yeah. I love taking photos with people. Oh. It's my, I love it. But there were so many cool things to see. The clothes that when you go in, that the people clothes. had booths. There was photo things. Um, this is the back alley of Sir. Oh. And Shan and I got to act like we were on a break <laughs> talking shit about Sheena Shea or whoever. Do like, they have cigarettes handy? Yes. That's great. That's why we have a cigarette in our hands. <laughs> like there were all these fun things. And because I am so incredibly blessed to have people recognize me from Juicy Scoop, I got to take a lot of photos, but I didn't get to like just spend like an hour and a half like seeing everything. Mm. Just doing Bravo So my Con plan like next year. And so well, then, then I just said I took when, sunglasses when, and took drinks out, but I still got you, We were meeting you. Yeah. And we walked around after yeah. we got no nothing. Yeah. And <laughs> and we're like, hello. I mean, next year I'm wearing a, you know, I'm like the person when the when the you know, star like TMZ drives by. I'm like, we used to be on Bravo. <laughs> we did. I don't care where we are. I asked Julie, I do it every time. I scream it out. I love it. So we go into the line and you come out and I'm like, what the fuck is Heather wearing? Because you're in like <laughs> Like uh -huh. a, the sexy outfit right here, which is like leather and pants like and a sexy top. And then all of a sudden you're in like strange sunglasses and like a hat. Yeah. And like, I was like, <laughs> did Heather wear that fucking hat? It's Drake's hat. Yeah. I was like, give me your hat. And so I was like, honestly, this is my plan for next year. I'm going to do the same thing. Hopefully it'll be in Vegas next year. And hopefully I'll have a show that Saturday night. I am going to go on Sunday, just like I, just like I did. Because I didn't go Friday. And honestly, I, cause I had this wedding. I, I, I would still do that. I think I would have been not as sharp for my Saturday show had I done Friday. I liked and my I Sunday because we were going to It's perfect. perfect. One day is a, like for me. And I, anyway, so my plan is to go Sunday after my show Saturday if, the, if I'm blessed to have the same type of weekend. And then um, I will go in a disguise. <laughs> not like with a prosthetic nose, but like maybe a, mm. like a blonde wig, a hat, like big baggy clothes, just so I can see everything. And then when I start to get dehydrated and thirsty, <laughs> I will throw off my wig, throw off my thing and have like a juicy scoop tank and then walk around and take photos. That's but good, I just, yeah. because again, everyone's so sweet, but it's like, if you don't, like I said, take a photo and then people feel like you snubbed them. And so there's no way to, and, and because I'm not talent, I'm not getting paid to be there. I'm not. I don't have any of that stuff, but I am such a fan. I still want to see everything, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, it was like we went to An Anderson Cooper and Andy Cohen yeah. um, when People's Couch was still on. And this is the other problem besides yeah. just, which it's not a problem. Like we love taking photos. We, we we loved everyone and we love that. And we're not even on TV anymore. So we definitely really like it. Oh, yeah. we're, we're so thirsty. We're the thirstiest We're almost the in a coma. I mean, the level. <laughs> we almost so, are like in a, um, yeah. having strokes. We, yeah. So we, but the mm -hmm. other problem, and this is a problem, is that they get you drunk. Oh, And we yeah. got so drunk at Anderson and Andy and then this time I mean we're I'm double fisting like shots of vodka we can't even get them yeah, down the fast fans enough. were very generous with yeah. uh, getting oh us God. some drinks so love love to girl the green dress yeah, oh, yeah. love to uh, Mercedes the, other... the attorney she gave yeah. us some drinks there were uh, yeah, um, summer there were, summer yeah there mm -hmm. were some people very generous thank I don't you know, but just so um, and this girl had a a, a, um, oh, wow. a jacket and she had a picture of me, like all her favorite oh, stuff yeah. and like favorite moments. That oh. was really fun. Then here we are. Um, then we go to the party. So I, the uh, taping, like I said. Oh, the only other thing, let me go back to the taping. The only other thing that I also saw was maybe it was a different night, not the show we went to. Teddy and Vicky had a, uh, had a kill the beef. Mm. Okay. And I thought this was pretty juicy. So 
The re- so the reason they have a beef, my understanding, is Teddy had a podcast before Tamara on iHeart. I think it was about fitness and wellness. And at some point, she and the iHeart was like, we'd rather have you do a, a um, housewife stuff. And somehow she thought Tamara. Tamara says yes. They start their show. According to Teddy, it was after they were doing their show together that then Vicky reached out to the bo- their boss at iHeart and said, it shouldn't be Teddy. It should be Vicky and me. I mean, it should be Teddy and me. Vicky said that. Oh. So that's why Teddy doesn't like Vicky. Wait, because- did she say it should be Tamara It should be Tamara. Me. Sorry, sorry. Vicky said it should be Tamara okay. and me. Why is she with Teddy? But when but Teddy had the, the show first. Right. And, and Tamara agreed to do it with Teddy. But not for and- nothing, Heather. She's not wrong. <laughs> She's not wrong. Okay. Well, I but I can see why that would annoy uh, why I would annoy Teddy. No. So la- I guess last year or something they had a, a kill the beef, and that's when Teddy said, "Where were you on January 6th to Vicky?" Oh, <gasps> and so they didn't squash the beef. Then they go and do <laughs> the Trace Amigas, and um, of course Teddy wants to go, you know, see Tamara. And Vicky says, absolutely not. Teddy's not welcome in the audience. Whoa. And Teddy's like, that's so dumb because I would have done a bunch of content and I want to support my friend and, you know, get people to go to your next show, whatever. Um, but I could also see how Vicky's like, this chick hates me. I'm already nervous. I'm not a performer. Yeah. I'm going to go on stage. I don't need someone who I think actively hates me being in the audience. I've been there too. It's a weird feeling. And you're like, I don't think I want that energy in the room. So I kind of understand Vicky for that. So now they go for squash the beef. And he's like, can you squash the beef? And T- Teddy says something like, um, the only part that matters is she goes, I think, Vicky, that you're still, you're that you're just triggered by someone who actually has cancer. <gasps> because Teddy is suffering from skin cancer right now going through getting things cut off and stuff. And um, and the audience was like, whoa, uh, like first they were like, good line. Yeah, you're mentioning cancer. You're, you know, and then she goes, you're disgusting. No, I have no respect for anyone that speaks like me. So he's like, so I guess the beach is not right. She leaves. T- Teddy has since said, look. Vicky walked off the stage? No, she just walked up from the step and oh. went back to her. Because, you know, they do like two chairs. And people, the comments are so funny. They're like, this is seriously like, the wrestling fights that people have, like on World of Wrestling, like these fake kind of fights, it felt very much like that. Oh. The audience being like, Rrr! and um, and you know, people were like, for her to even bring up cancer. To, anyway, Teddy then defended herself, and she goes, "Look, this is why I said those things. I'm not, I'm not, I'm sorry that I said the cancer thing, you know, because it triggers a lot of people in the audience. But I do have it. But again, she did, Vicky." have the one of the juiciest storylines and one of the most egregious ones about, you know, having a boyfriend claiming he had cancer hey. and her being like, binder, binder, binder. I have all this binder. We're going to the Hogue, da, da, da. And what happens all these years later? She gets the housewife, the year, whatever, the lifetime housewife award. That's right. Brooks is right for me. Brooks is right for me. Okay. <laughs> Brooks is right for me. And I, I, she deserves the lifetime team award. She is. She is. She does. She does. She deserves it. She gives. I didn't have a three. Ah! She did all of it. She and she did. did a, she all. did a great speech when she got it. But I will mm. say, I saw Dorinda do a quick interview, and I thought this was great advice for everyone, including the three of us. Okay. okay. So they said, Dorinda, when what is something that you wish you could have told your younger self before? You know, a few years ago, starting this journey. And she's like, what I really wish I would have told myself is that not to take everything so personally and so, you know, so on your sleeve because it all washes out in the sand or whatever that expression is. <laughs> it all washes out. Mm-hmm. And I was like, look at Vicky. God does it. If you can, ju- you're going to have bad seasons. You're going to have people attacking you. You're going to have people saying you're an earring thief. You're a horrible person, blah, 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 blah. Um, if you're on the show, though I'm not on the show, which is why I don't think I deserve to have that happen. But but that's going to happen. And providing you don't end up in prison like Jen Shaw, mm. um, the rest of it, if you just toe the line. Yeah. If you keep showing in up. In a couple years, you'll be getting the Lifetime Achievement Award, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Providing you don't really like, you know, I don't think Raquel will get the Lifetime Achievement Award. I don't think Jen Shaw will. There's certain people that will never get it. 
I don't think Lisa Rinna will. Even if she was to come back, she will not. But like, um, but yeah, like could Dorinda get it one year? Probably. She, you know, and she said a mean, she said a really nasty thing to Tinsley. Yeah. Did you get a turkey baster to get yourself <laughs> pregnant? You know, and that was pretty bad. That's yeah. kind of what got her on pause. Right. But all those people cheering outside in the Vegas heat. You think they care about that turkey baster statement? No. You think they're like, I'm going to stay home. I don't want to pitch it with Dorinda. No. No. Nope. No. No. Because they're the, thirsty too. And even, they want to post the yeah, photo of them and Dorinda. Right. Even the bitch that Jax blocked was yeah. there for the photo. Yeah. yeah. And went up to him and yeah. said, you blocked me. Yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Because I hate you, but I'm so excited to get a photo with you because you're famous. And they're going to, I'm sure that Tom, I'm sure the line to take pictures with Tom Sandoval was around the block. Yeah, you I know. What I mean? Yeah, oh, I'm sure. I'm I don't know about sure that. Even was. though they were booing and all that, I'm sure they're booing yeah. and taking pictures with him, and yeah. all of that is part of it. And all of that's it, why people are going to his show. His, you know, his, his band. Are, his all yeah. his shows are doing great. Yeah, all his shows are doing great. So right. everyone's going to be just fine. And really, unless you, you're right. Unless you go to jail, and even. And I do think Jen Shaw's going to get out of well, jail. Well, Teresa she, went to jail. And right. she's probably the next one to get the lifetime achievement. Yes. She should get it next year. Right. She really should. Yep. I mean, You're she right. should. She delivers. She same delivers. As Vicky. Yeah. She's a, you know, I think for, I would say for the next however long Bravo goes on, they're going to give it to first season or like. They should. Right. Right. Yeah. You're right. So 100% I mean, Teresa will next year. But I guess Ramona won't probably ever get it. <laughs> I don't think Ramona's <laughs> ever going to get it. <laughs> um, no. And I kind of think she's, I definitely think. At mm. this point, I don't think she'll be doing many more, any shows in the future. That's my prediction. I do think at a certain time when that happens, and you're also so senior as far as being on the show, but also she is a senior citizen when she's 66. I do feel the fact that people were super excited about the, the new Roni girls, mm. it's because they have been to this three times. They've seen, you know, they've seen the OGs. They've gone to their other shows. They've gone to the Mohegan Sun and seen them talk. You know, they've seen, they've done <laughs> right. it. So, like to see like Uba and and Sai and people like that, they are really excited. Mm, yeah. And so, like, let them grow with the moment. You know, who wasn't there was Jenna Lyons. She didn't come. Oh, are you sure she wasn't there on Friday? I heard from Kate Casey. It's her understanding she didn't come at all, and that um, and I didn't see anybody have pictures with her or anything. And I mean, I. I then I think she's done. Like I don't think she's gonna come back next season. Mm. You can't just say I have a cold. I'm gonna miss BravoCon <laughs> because I have social anxiety because my mom had Asperger's, and I you know. But she's the J Crew, right? Yes, yeah, she's the I mean, lesbian. I was, like looking she's around Jenna for the fucking outfits. lions. Yeah, yes. she's Jenna fucking lions. <laughs> she would have been like the biggest hit of that group. And but I I can imagine knowing her personality. I don't know why she was on the show in the first place. Certainly, I don't think anything could be more stressful for someone like her than going to BravoCon. Mm. Like from her, I don't think. But they all went last year, yeah. so um, that maybe those were the photos I saw. I wonder if, they, some, they I wonder if someone could say, if you were Jenna Lyons, I wonder if you could say, or whatever your case is. I will do the panels. I will not do photos. It's too much. It stresses me out. I don't want someone that close to me. Like, could they get out of that? I, they must be able to. They, they can't force to. you yeah. to have to take photos with strangers. No, there'd be no way. They have to be it's able just to. Not I mean, 99, look, it's not a good look. No, it's not a good look. I mean, well, listen, I you think just you have to leave. get blackout drunk like me. <laughs> <laughs> like, find a way to deal She's with sober. it, Jenna. She's sober. Oh, well, then she can't go. It's Bravo gone. Um, but I think that she... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't. I I predict she will not be back. I think it is not for her. And and I I don't think we need to see any more of it. We saw the closet in which you never wore anything cute from that closet. Mm. We're all supposed to get wet to see all these high heels. When every time you're just like wearing jeans and a blazer, which is fine. It's still a chic outfit. But like, why is everyone like so orgasmic about her? I don't get it. When she does uh, dress up, it, she really brings like. She definitely has like fashion is where it's at for her. I don't I mean, we didn't watch uh, the new reboot, but I know the only thing I did care about was just seeing pictures of her. Yeah. And then I know that that one a girl, Erin, did do an outfit that was just underwear. <laughs> she did two girls. <laughs> several of them were just underwear. Yeah. Why did they do that? Um, to compete I th with Jenna Lyons. I, 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 I think didn't show that up. we could talk about it. <laughs> Paige from uh, from where is she from? Summer House. She wore just a a crystal diaper and a like a like and then like an Oxford white shirt and then. Yeah, um, it's always party on the bottom, business on the top. They all did like collared shirts with with the diapers. Yeah. 
I feel like the no, certainly the the one Aaron. I think she did it to compete with Jenna Lyons. You mm. maybe. And then um, the mm. final juicy thing that happened was Dorit um, was asked about something on a panel. Uh, I guess it was the the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills panel, and it was about the music video that Kyle and Morgan Wade did, and um, and uh, they're like, "What did you think of that, girls?" And Erica's like, "I didn't see it. I didn't watch it." And Kyle just kind of laughs. And Dorit goes, "Well, actually, you know what? I said to Kyle, I said, Kyle, you know, there's so much discussion about you and Morgan. Maybe this isn't such a great move." That this video is coming out now of you being romantic in the video. But what you don't know is that the music video was done way before Mm. anybody had talked about them being romantic. Well, I think it's Face Reality 16, great Instagram account. If I'm wrong, I apologize. Went and showed the video of the interview of Kyle and Morgan, where Morgan's like, well, you know, we just decided, first of all, she slept it. She uh, came into my DMs and I'm like, who is this girl? She's from Beverly Hills. I've never heard of Beverly Hills. I've never seen any of these shows. And she's a big movie star. And she yes. wanted to be my friend. And then Kyle's like, yeah, I didn't, you know. And um, so and then everyone thought it was weird that we were friends. And Kyle's like, yeah, why does everyone think it was weird? That-? So we decided to make fun of it, of people thinking we're in a relationship by doing this video. Oh. So it was a direct lie. I see. Did the person get the title? Either Kyle lied to Dorit or Dorit made up the lie or they were just confused. But according to the interview of the two of them sitting there, they said they did the romantic lesbian video of I'm going to make you love me (laughs) and all that (laughs) with her looking outside the window and. Morgan carrying boxes with nothing in it and getting all wet for and like <laughs> eating fruit in the tub and all this stuff. And <laughs> and they did. They said they did that. And she's like, I mean, we had to do this video and make fun of it because, I mean, this girl from Beverly Hills, she sneezes and there's 17 articles about it. Mm-hmm. I, I don't the think video, there's 17 articles about you sneezing. Well, there was definitely 17 articles about how cringe that video was. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Like, not carrying not boxes and then not looking, and, and munching boxes okay? and by the way i get i guess mauricio and his dancing partner are off and um, um they were seen out again holding hands um so they are definitely fucking and she i don't also, know why people would think they're together just because they're holding hands definitely so, not you know what i mean it's the same with kyle and M- morgan yeah. why would people think that they're doing anything at all just because of what just they look we like they're doing a, just because we dress alike and they, she goes on tour with me and we get one room <laughs> she sits on my lap all day <laughs> yeah i don't think i don't know why that's weird i mean listen it was a private jet and um you know it, it was just more comfortable even though i had my own seat to just sit on kyle's lap <laughs> And that was the photo that we took. <laughs> and then um, one day she was like, I like your ripped jeans. And I said, oh, I have another pair. And since we were sharing a room together while we were filming a documentary about my music, um, she just put them on. But I don't know what anyone said. But she did say, Kyle did say, you know, it's been a hard year with everything and the divorce. She did say she divorce. She did say divorce. And then she was asked, is her daughter still engaged? Who's on Buying a Beverly Hills? Mm. Because she had her engagement feature on last season, but there's no weddings happen. And she goes, um, actually, I don't know. I don't know. Let me call and ask her. <laughs> so then she calls her and she's like, oh, she didn't answer. But, you know, you got to ask her yourself. That's not for me to answer. Well, clearly there's that's probably not happening. But I feel mm. kind of bad because the daughter didn't ask for that either. But the daughter, well, she did because now she's on buying in Beverly Hills. But, you know, maybe we'll see it when that comes out. Wow. I'm kind of surprised that they would be not engaged anymore. I'm actually kind of shocked. I know there was rumors about. Oh, there was. Yeah. Oh, OK. About. You know, lurking around other people, seeing her, him with other people. I don't know if it's true. Well, now then that reminds me of Paris. Because her Paris was going to be in the wedding, probably. Oh. And uh. Paris in Love, season two, is like coming out soon. Can't wait. And we live. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, cannot wait for that to drop. So exciting. Julie's favorite thing to do is hate on Carter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, speaking of which, when I did my angry uh, reel mm. about what I had dropped about the earrings on my show, mm-hmm. Kathy Hilton did a wonderful comment. And she said, karma, you 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 know, and she's certainly been through it, right? Oh, that's right. She's like, it, the truth will come out and they'll get their karma and you just keep your head up high. And I was like, mm-hmm. thanks, Queen. Do you think I get invited now to the Christmas party? I hope oh, so. God, God damn it, Heather. 
please. Oh. We love Kathy Hilton. Okay. Oh. That is genius. If you, um, I will wear the Juicy Scoop security t-shirt and take you there. <laughs> I what mean, if that's just how I get myself me? into everything? I just buy multiple Juicy Scoop security <laughs> shirts and go for it. Yeah. I mean, to be oh, able I to do go have, to that. Someone mm. said I should have uh, Juicy Hoops. I do have two. I don't if the, I draw on the right ears. Juicy Scoop or are they? I supposed to be opposite. They are no, earrings. That's right. I can't tell. I have to figure out how to juicy get these scoop. on my site. Heather McDonald. Okay. Juicy Scoop. Okay. So you don't have those for sale? Um. I, no, I think someone gave them to me, but oh, okay. I need to figure out. Maybe if a jewelry company can do it, then we can sell them. Why on don't my you site. find out who made those? <laughs> <laughs> and you can have them make yours. They'll be under a hundred bucks. <laughs> That's right. Oh, they'll they'll definitely be under a hundred bucks. Any kind of earrings I sell for sure, probably even less. Because you know what? Sometimes they fall out. That's Sometimes right. They do. And, yeah. And didn't we all three just have dinner together? Went to sushi, and I only had one fucking earring. Oh, that's right. <laughs> it's like. It's that simple. I mean, you know, I mean, honestly, even if it was all honest mistakes, it was it was the dragging that was the problem. I had diamond hoop right. earrings that I bought from Costco, which, by the way, uh, the radio host was obsessed that I bought my jewelry at Costco. Guess what? It's certified. It's real shit when you buy it at Costco. Mm. And I bought these diamond hoops. And one time during COVID, I had to wear the mask on the plane. And not until I got into the car oh, did I realize that in taking the mask on, taking the mask on, to, that one was gone. And I still have the other because I'm like, well, maybe I'll do something with it. But you do lose earrings. And those were about three grand. And I did lose them. And I was sick for weeks yeah. about it, you know. Um, um, okay, Shannon and I went to the Vanderpump restaurant in <laughs> Paris. Nice. That so was we, I just have to say that night oh. of... Um, and then here we are at the end. We left early from the watch what happens right live. that's not even what it's called in the program which is it was weird, called the shade room okay but they're supposed to be shady but they really weren't that shady but like basically the wa a watch what happens live taping right right is the the one earlier in the evening there were two there were two yeah we got the one at the at the okay. eight o'clock or nine o'clock time um we just had to leave early we we i one i couldn't be seen with you any longer like i couldn't <laughs> like I was like, it's just a wrap. It's so like we. Were, I was so drunk, and I was, and it's so much sensory overload. And it's a that's exactly the best way to describe it. And then it's like every day because I I flew out to San Francisco on Thursday to uh, have mm. a nice dinner before this wedding. I'm so glad I went to the cousin's wedding. We had such a fun time. Then I'd get up at six, earlier than six, get cute because I'm like I'm going straight to BravoCon. Get all cute, okay. And then as I let Peter just lays in the bed, bye, he gets to have brunch with his family. You know, I had the two huge suitcases because I have the iPad and the da 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 and and the certificate and like all the yeah. things and the appraisal. And um, so I get to the airport and I, somehow I, I land in, in Vegas and I'm following the baggage signs, following the baggage camp. I took United. All of a sudden, I cannot find the United baggage and there's nobody that works there. I was like in the twilight zone. Finally, I asked a chauffeur, I go, Am I like in the wrong terminal for United? I mean, this is, I, I just landed and I went down like one escalator and he's like, oh yeah, you're in a totally different terminal. Ugh. I must have like, I don't know, followed a group of people somewhere. And so now I have to go across the street oh. and then get in a little tram and the girl's like, oh, I like your pants, but what's with those ugly shoes? And I'm like, well, I have cute shoes, but I'm like, I'm wearing these like tennis shoes because I'm walking through a terminal. <laughs> yeah, so, oh then I, like, so then I get back as it was just like a lot. It, it was just a lot. And every night I would go to bed at like 1.30 and wake up at 5.30 because I was so like wired yeah, you throughout turn it off. everything. Yeah. I do want to say it was a delight hanging out with Drake. In addition to you, my you, son. Mm -hmm. to you um, giving us full VIP all weekend free every dinner paid for every baller event paid for like I felt fuck we were supposed to bring our fuck. bottle of Dom oh my god we were there ugh. are many other opportunities well, for that and I just want to thank you we, though for having us I, you know like definitely I don't think we even performed up to the standard no of yes the show. you did it was <laughs> such a fun show and and I did record it and I but you know what I listened to it. the audio is not great so I'm letting people uh, know I'll probably just kind of recap some of the juicy stuff I might share some of the audio on my patreon but it is not to a standard of putting out um 
But no, you guys were hilarious. We covered so much juicy stuff and people loved the show and it was just such a fun weekend. I do highly recommend going. I really do. Making a weekend. I think Vegas is much better than New York because there's so many different hotels to choose from and they're all pretty close, different prices. You can do different things. You can go to different shows, you know, and maybe just do partially BravoCon. You're still going to see the stars. I think it's great. Yeah, a lot of people I went think to it's Usher. Get bigger and more fun. Yeah, yeah people went to Usher. Or you could go to U2. U2 yeah. was Saturday night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You go yeah. to, uh, to Thunder from Down Under. Adele, yeah. my friend went to Adele. Yeah. Like you can go like oh, Adele, yeah. make a whole Vegas thing and maybe don't, you don't make that your whole weekend. That could just be part of your thing. Or just come see me. Don't do any BravoCon. Yeah. We saw, uh, when we got to our hotel, we saw this couple of girls with their husbands and they said they, they had already bought their tickets to Vegas and their hotel prior to getting the tickets to BravoCon and they didn't end up being able to oh, right. sold out. Yep. And so they were like, well, we'll just bring our husbands and just have a fun weekend in Vegas. And you know, they got to see a ton of people anyway because yeah. they're all around Vegas. I mean, just like we saw Candy at the freaking mall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? And again, they do want to be recognized and approached and everything. So like, yeah, you'll see them gambling. You'll see them whatever. Yep. You can and- run Scream After Shep while he yeah. ignores you, you know, <laughs> that old chestnut. <laughs> But I do want to say, Heather, that Drake, that was a delight hanging out with Drake. Mm -hmm. We got to hang out. We've hung out with him before at shows and in life, but we hung out with him all weekend with you. And I think that's a testament to what a good person and a good mother you are, because he is um, just a class act. I mean, he's a class act. And we know Brandon, too. We've, We've mainly hung out with Brandon on your boat. I have to keep saying how we hung out with people on your boat because that's what I do. But um, we never had hung out with with Drake like that. And it was he was with stuck with three, four, four at one point five middle age weekend, middle age women all weekend. This poor kid. Listen, I think that is the <laughs> ultimate flex to all the young mommies out there that are strapped down with boys. And to think that, you know, you can be me and have your 21 year old son fly in from college and be fucking fun. And then on Monday as a treat, after he filmed my little opening and put the show together, we I said, would you like a first real massage? And he got a real massage at oh. the Canyon Ranch and he loved it. And Shannon and I got facials and like, it That's was just, great. it was like perfect. Like from beginning to end, the meals were great. Like everything was great. so fun. Shannon was fun too. Yeah, so Shannon's always fun. Yeah, Shannon's yeah, yeah. great. My sister. Yeah. yeah. Well, something that happened on um, live at the show, um, we did do this live, but we're going to do it here again. Okay, great. It was supposed to be with a bottle of Dom, but of course, we didn't remember to buy that. <sighs> it's okay. I will only drag you for two months about <laughs> okay. it. Okay. On the show. Right. <laughs> yeah. So we got this call, and um, it's really it's very special, and it is pretty exciting. This is the from the tenth annual American Reality Television Awards. They are presenting you with best reality podcast, and it says Juicy Scoop with Heather McDonald. Like this is the, a real award, okay? This is the real award, and actually, I'm really really thrilled because there's been stuff like this in the, pla- the past few years, and I've never won before, and. You know, millions of people vote for this stuff. Mm. And so a lot of you did. And I really, really appreciate it. And, and let's I not absolutely forget love that it. There's um, the same as there's a million people who vote. There's also a million people that all have reality podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> so it is an honor to win that. It is an honor. And I am going to do my speech that I always plan on doing when I, you know, any award I get. And this is the first real award I've ever won in my life. So I will let this be a testament to you. Wow, it's a lot heavier than I thought it would be. (laughs) I was just a girl growing up, not too far from here, just uh, south of the boulevard, uh, going to Catholic school, going on to another private school, and then graduating from USC, which was, you know, tough and hard. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to make it in the podcasting world, which had not been invented at the time. (laughs) (laughs) And now look at me. No, seriously, I want to thank you. I want to thank the Juicy Scoopers. I want to thank people that have stuck by me. These last eight and a half years have not been easy. I've been in multiple networks. I've been sued. I've been sexually harassed. I've been dragged for months by (laughs) someone who I thought was my friend on a radio show. 
I've you know. other people have said awful things about me on other radio shows and everything. And uh, I continue <laughs> to get up and be funny every Tuesday and Thursday, uh, Patreon on Friday. And I appreciate you guys. No, this is really lovely. Thank you. Thank you, the American Reality Television Awards, for giving me this award. I appreciate you. Um, Brandy and Julie, before we end, mm. tell everybody uh, you're wearing your SAG shirts mm -hmm. in solidarity. And we really hope this gets resolved. The shirts are cute, by the way. <sighs> They're cute. We only have 14 listeners, so we thought we'd come on to the bigger audience and support SAG. We have yes. not walked in the strike, despite the fact that it is um, basically around the corner from my home. Um, I don't even honk when I drive by because it just gives me anxiety when there's like a bunch of honking and a bunch of pedestrians. And I'm like, God forbid I would kill one of these people. Mm -hmm. So this was our... Um, and I fact, don't know that this is helping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean... They were almost about to make a deal. It's been going on forever. And I thought it was, I guess I read the wrong headline because during our show, I said it's been solved. I saw something that said it's like done. And I guess it wasn't on Saturday. I think that they were um, in, in talks and everybody thought it would go down. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm I'm impressed and in support, as is Julia, of fighting for the best contract that that they can get i mean people who work in everything is streaming the money isn't there it's that i say this all the time but it's it is the besides podcasting it's the most competitive <laughs> industry in the world and p you deserve to be overpaid disgustingly overpaid because it takes years and years and years to book one thing and maybe people book one or two things a year and you have to survive the whole year on it you know, or so, for years. Yeah, you don't get yeah, paid every audition years. you do. You don't no. get paid when you go to no. acting class. You don't get paid when you, you know, have to do uh, a read Anything. in a room or send it on film, and all that takes time and energy. And you know, I do. I'm. I'm. You guys. I don't know when we're gonna get and just like that back. <laughs> Well, and that's, that's a huge we, yeah. part of my life. It's a huge part of Juicy Scoop. <laughs> I like to make fun of it. I love to love it. I love to hate it. I love it all. And I'm sad. Well, that's why SAG needs to make the deal. Please, you guys. They need to make the deal. We they, need to. I want Shay Diaz doing a comedy concert. <laughs> I want I want all my all predictions for the show to come to fruition. And these big, long breaks, it's like, come on. So, I know. I need I my two badly. auditions a year where they really want a man. And I want them, even though I'll get rejected or for some other person who'll get it. And I just, but I need it in my life. But now I don't have it. I feel like when this is solved, I think both of you are going to be popping in the acting world. I really do. Oh. I really think you should oh, really seriously go hardcore and pursue it because I think you will be booking a lot of stuff. I really do. Let's put that into the universe. Let's put that into Julie. the universe. <laughs> I hate acting. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, I do commercials. The commercial SAG commercials aren't on strike. Um, but of course, we're we're still all part of SAG. And yeah. Um, yeah, we basically need Julie to get something. I think it's Julie's year. Good. Wow. I really do. From your lips to um, God's And where ears. else can everybody listen to your uh, your shows? Because you have several. Um, right? You can go to our website, julieandbrandy.com, um, or you can Google Julie and Brandy Podcast. We Our podcast is called The Dumb Gay Podcast. Um, we also have a Patreon that we like, you know... Um, Dumb Gay Podcast is more has segments. It's like world events, current events, interviews. Our Patreon is nothing but us just being dumb assholes. I love it. Yeah. So there's, you can get both or one or whatever. Yeah. Support Brandy and Julie. I love you. I'm so glad we're friends. Women stick together. And um, there will have many, many more fun, fun times on the air and off. And, and if there is ever an issue, I hope <laughs> that you'll return my calls and we can talk and not drag it out publicly I think without we, trying to solve it as friends do first. I and think, that's what I'm most sad about. I yeah. think we should do, that's a thousand percent what we're most sad about. Losing the uh, friendships across the board has been the worst part of all of this. Mm -hmm. um, but I do in life um, want to try with everyone in my life to communicate if I'm feeling upset, if I'm feeling resentful, if I'm feeling misunderstood. I think we should all try, especially like in 2024, let's all resolve to like communicate with the people that we love and if, if, and not expect them to read our minds 
And even if, you know, we're- Or to listen to the podcast where you talk behind their back. <laughs> Maybe they don't have a subscription to yeah. <laughs> to the Patreon of the Sirius. Maybe just pick up the phone and say it. Yeah. Don't wait until it gets to the point where it's a wrap. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, I haven't always been perfect about that either, but I plan on, you know, I don't want to lose any more friends either. I'm, <laughs> I'm good with the ones I have. I don't need to go back to the other ones, but I don't want to lose any current ones. So please... Call We're not going to take relationships <laughs> for granted. We're going to work on them. We're going to be present and we're going to communicate our feelings. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and that's why you won the award. Yes, okay. I did. <laughs>